Ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, proud to present our next speaker, representing the 6th Congressional District in North Carolina. Please welcome to the stage, Congressman Mark Walker. Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. So she may want to lock a few of you up in prison as well, but I think that check was uh, used up a few years ago. We'll leave that alone. Uh, as a former pastor for 16 years, I was thinking a couple of days ago, uh, some of the remarks that I might share today, and, and I know the last thing that you probably want, or I probably want, is another political speech. So I, I began to think about a question question that I wanted to ask you, each and every one of you today, is, is it worth it? Is the fight worth it? Is it worth your time and resources? Is it worth being called bigots, sexists, and other names? Tell your neighbor it's worth it. It's, it's worth it, isn't it? Is it worth standing up and being a voice for the life of an unborn baby? I said, Ms. Richards, does it bother you that there are more African-American babies aborted in the state of New York than actually born now? Does that bother you? She had no answer for that, and most of the time they don't. What we're seeing in Virginia and New York and even looks like North Carolina is trying to put in abortion laws in only six other countries in the world, none in South America, none in Europe, none in Eastern Europe. You have to go to some of the third world countries, places like North Korea and others, that find that, okay, that are okay with infanticide. It's a shame and a reproach, and we need to continue to fight that fight. It's worth it. Thank God that we have a president who believes that it's worth it. It's worth it to stand up against North Korea. It's worth it to call out China for the encroachment that's stealing of our intellectual property. And it's worth the fight at the border. It's worth it. And it should be worth it to all elected Republicans. Amen? See, I believe when I ran for Congress four and a half years ago that you could do two things. You could be both effective and you still could be conservative. That's why I became the only new member ever elected to chair the largest conservative caucus in Washington, the Republic Study Committee. In November, I was elected vice chair of the entire conference, the number four position. And I still believe that you can be conservative and be effective. In January, I was appointed the ranking member on the subcommittee for counterterrorism and intelligence. Now, it's a privilege to work in these different areas. And I see some startling numbers and data and videos and pictures up front of what this country is facing. I've had the privilege of traveling to many places, meeting with parliaments, presidents, prime ministers, going to Israel, going down into Jericho, to Jordan, to Romania, been to Australia, New Zealand, all the different places, 20-something different countries. I've stood there at the demilitarization zone right there and looked at the North Korea soldiers feet in front of me as they, their uniforms just swallowed them up due to malnourishment. I've been in many places, but there's one place that stands out far greater than any other, and that is spending Memorial Day in Normandy. Think of that about that. On that fateful day, June 6, 1944, many of you know the history, there were five beaches that the Allied forces were supposed to come into that day. Gold, Juno, Sword, but they left the two toughest beaches. They left those two to the Americans. That's where the Germans were dug in. And as those young men began to fight, and I remember standing at the grave of Jimmy Overcash, a 20-year-old young man right here from close to Mecklenburg County. You see, as I looked out over those places, I looked at the history there, 
in a place where the Germans had radioed back to the German general, Dietrich Cross, and he reported back to his headquarters that the, the Americans are retreating, but that was not the case. You see, as they put those young Americans on those boats, more like shipping containers, 30, 35 at a time, and not to be too graphic, they were dehydrated, they were throwing up on each other, and at 30, 35, sometimes 26 and 27, 28 were killed as they got off that boat. But they kept moving up that hill. But here's the story behind the story. The weather, as you know, did not cooperate that day. The air support missed their drop. They had all these great military laid plans by generals, by colonels, by great military men. But no, the battle wasn't won that day by military plans. It was won by 18 and 19 year old, 20 year old young men continued events of that day. Teaches at a small school, doesn't make a lot of money, lost his 10 year old in an auto accident just a few months ago, but it continues to stand for the values. David, I believe you're from Salmson County. Are you in the house today? Would you please stand and let us say thank you for being here today? Because it's wonderful.